Hey everyone, welcome back to CodeIgniter from scratch day two. What I want to do today is go over database connectivity. That was the first thing that I was really interested in when I got into this framework was how can I begin working with a database and saving myself a great deal of time. So we're just going to play around with uh, uh, retrieving records from a database, maybe updating records, inserting records, things like that. I think that's a, a great idea for day two. So, if I come back to TextMate, you'll see here I have the exact set of files that we did in day one, except that I've renamed them to CI underscore day two. Now, if you're just joining us, don't worry. Uh, we're going to be working more or less from scratch, but I want to have something to work off of if you guys are working along. So, the first thing we want to do is set up a database uh, that we can work with. And I've already gone ahead and done that for you since I think it might be kind of boring and it gets away from what we're learning. So if you remember, uh, last week we created a database called CI underscore series, and we created a test table. I've gone ahead and created a new table called data, and it contains uh, four fields, the ID, title, author, contents. And if you browse it, I've just added some sample data. Okay. The only thing worth noting is the ID, of course, is set to auto increment, and it's a primary key. So, good. The first thing we should do is create a new model. So we're going to go into our application, and let's see if I can make this a little bit bigger for us. There we go. I'm going to go into our model because remember, we're working with data, so we need to be using a model. So I'm going to right click and create a new file, and I'm just going to call this data model. Okay. And of course, we need to create our opening PHP tags. And we're going to say class data model extends model. Okay. Now, the first thing we want to do is create a method. And let's just keep it simple. The first one we're going to do is just going to retrieve all the rows. Okay. So we kind of went over that last time. Let's do function get all. And we got a first make a connection to the database. So remember, if you're working from scratch, you need to go into your config folder and set up your database credentials. And you see here, these are the areas I've edited. So we have our host name is localhost, username is root, password is root. Uh, with your server, I'm sure that's going to be locked down. And then I've also selected my primary database, which is CI series. Okay, so make sure you take care of that. The other thing worth noting is if we aren't going to auto load our database, we'd have to do it ourselves. But as you're almost always going to be working with the database in most uh, larger project, projects, it's a smart idea to go into your auto load and just go ahead and auto load the database class. All right, and you can see that auto load libraries, I went ahead and typed that in. And we did that last week. So let's do it a little bit different. Let's create a new variable called Q for query. And this time we're actually going to pass in actual SQL. So we're going to do this DB, and we uh, this DB is made available to us because we auto-loaded that database class. And we're going to run a query. So we'll do query. And within this query, we can type in as a string a SQL. So let's get a little more real estate in here. And within it, I'm just going to select all. So we'll do select all from the name of the table is data. Okay, and that should be fine. So now, whatever is retrieved from there is stored in this queue variable. All right, so the next thing we can do is say if uh, queue, if the number of rows returned is greater than one, I'm sorry, greater than zero, then we know that we have something to work with. Otherwise, we don't want to do anything, correct? So let's create a new data array, and that's going to be equal to, I'm sorry, let's uh, add our for each statement, for each Q result, and this will store our records into this result. For each one of those as uh, row, then we'll create a new data array, and that's going to be equal to row. So to go over this, what is why are we setting this as an array? And it's because for each instance, uh, data, we're going to add a new key, and that's going to be equal to all of the records in the row. And then the for each statement is going to run again. And this time, we're going to create a new uh, key in our data array, and that's going to store the next row. That way, we can return all those records. So after the for each statement, we're going to return data. 
And I think that should be good for now. There are a couple of things we should do for best practice later, but I'm going to leave it at this for now. So now we have our model for connecting to the database, but of course we don't want to echo anything out directly from our model. We would do that from our controller, correct? Because the controller manages everything. So create a new controller. And you know what I'm going to do? We have this site here. I'm just going to clear all this out because we don't need it. And now we have just a blank controller called site. So we'll do function index. And what we want to do here, remember, this is basically the equivalent of when the user loads the index page. What do we want to do? Well, we want to load the database model called data underscore model and, and call this method get all. All right. So let's do this. This model, I'm sorry, this load model. And within parentheses, we're going to type in the name of the model that we want to load. So data underscore model. And we're going to... Oops. Now that we've loaded it, we can access that that model as a class. This data model, and the next one is going to be the method that we're going to call. In this case, get all. But now, if you remember, if we go back to our model, this is going to return information. So we need to make sure that we trap that information into our variable from the controller. Correct. So data is going to be equal to this method. So now when this method runs, it's going to store all of those rows into this data array. That array is going to be returned and then stored into this data variable. Okay. And then we need to, now that we've gotten that information, we need to go ahead and load a view so that we can display the information. This load view, and let's see what we have here. We have home, that'll be fine for now, so let's just go ahead and load that home view. And we want to pass our data array. So because this is an array, why don't we go ahead and add a key to it, and we'll say data um, rows. I think it's fine for now. We should probably be a little more clear, but I think that's fine for now since we're not really working with any uh, hard data. So now we're going to load the home view, and we're going to pass this data array to that view. And then we will then, from the view, have access to this information from this rows. And let's open up home. And I'm going to get rid of all of this. And we're going to work with it. So PHP. And we're going to say for each row. And I just want to make sure I go over this. Remember, when we pass this array, uh, these keys are then turned into their own variables or arrays that we can work with. So we would access it just like a dollar rows. So for each wrong page, for each row as r, row as r, then we are going to, uh, what should we do here? Let's just echo out an h1 tag and our title and our closing h1 tag. And we'll clean this up a little bit more later using short tags. But I think that's fine for now. So let's go ahead and view this and see if I made a mistake. Let's open our start page, and we're going to ci underscore day 2. And we do have a notice. So a PHP error was encountered, undefined variable row. So if we go back to our site, of course, I called it rows it's for each rows. Let's see if that fixed it. OK, and now we have our information that we're retrieving from the database. So why don't we clean this up? I think it's easier, especially when you're working with a lot of HTML and PHP, use short tags. So PHP for each rows as R. Then we're going to echo out h1 tag, PHP echo R title. And let's also do uh, the contents, right? So let's do div. Then here, PHP echo R contents. And I think that's good for now. And of course, we need to close out our for each statement. So end for each. 
just in case you didn't know how to do it that way. And now we come back, we refresh the page, and now we have our information in a view source. You can see it displayed that correctly. Good. Good deal. So we now know how to query a database. If we go back to our model, we know how to pass in SQL. But we can actually make this a little bit easier. So I'm going to go down here and let's do another one. And this time we're going to use something called active records. And this is a feature of CodeIgniter that allows us to expedite uh, these queries. Rather than having to write all of the SQL, we can just use something called get. And I'm going to show you that right now. So what I'll do here is I want to make sure you have this for the downloadable source code. So I'm going to just comment this out. That way, if you want to work with it, you can. And we're going to create another identical function, but this time we're going to use active records to grab it. So we're going to say q equals this db, but this time we're going to do get, and that's the equivalent of just saying select all. And within parentheses, we type in the name of the table that we want to get, so in this case, data. So we're saying get everything from data. Now we can additionally pass in uh, two extra parameters if we want. The second parameter is going to be the limit. How many do you want to return? So let's say uh, maybe for your home page you only want to show the first five records from a table. You type in five. And then also the third parameter would be an offset if you wanted to include that as well. All right. I'm just going to keep it simple as that. And now, once again, we would do if q rows is greater than zero for each Q result as row, once again, data equals row, return. And this is something you'll find with CodeIgniter. You type this sequence uh, quite a bit. I do it quite a bit. So you might want to consider what I do is uh, setting up this kind of uh, this key and text expander. That way I can just paste it in and add my own information. All right. So the only difference here is rather than passing in SQL, we're using get. So let's see if that still works. I'm going to refresh the page. And undefined property result. Let's see if I missed something. For each Q result, refresh the page. And now we're getting the exact same information. Okay, good. So you can choose how much control you need. Now, what if you don't want to get every single row? What if maybe you only want to get a few rows? Okay. Well, once again, I'm going to comment all of this out for your convenience when you download it. And we're going to do Q equals this DB. And we're going to do select. So this db select. And here we can paste in, or not paste in, we can type in what fields we want to grab. So let's say we don't want to worry about the author right now. We just want to get the title and the contents. So we would do the title. Contents. And then we would do, um, let's get rid of the q. And we do q equals this db get and then once again data and what I'm going to do here is to save time we're just going to copy all of that paste it in refresh the page and nothing's going to change but I can assure you that this time it's only going into the database and grabbing these rows and that will be much quicker for you especially when you have these uh, these tables where they have 30, 30 different fields. If you don't need that much information, uh, it's a waste of time and it's going to take much longer than to just select a few items. Okay, so now you know how to query with SQL. You know how to query with active records. This gets much more complicated, but I just want to give you a crash course in this. And now you know how to do a specific queries. Now we're going to continue on with uh, kind of CodeIgniter's version of prepared statements. So as you know, when uh, retrieving records from a database, you need to be very careful about making sure that you escape information, especially when maybe you're using a user uh, user input information to retrieve records, maybe where they type in their name and it's going to retrieve all records from the table that has their name as the author or something like that. You want to make sure that you escape that data just to make sure that there's no kind of SQL injection, right? 
So we can use something called query bindings in CodeIgniter, and this is very similar to, uh, to prepared statements and things like that where you can bind whatever the user types in, uh, maybe to a text box or something like that, you'll bind that to your query. That way you don't have to worry about escaping it. It'll take care of it for you. So just make this a little, uh, make more sense. Once again, let's do this again. Okay, so the first one is, let's just create a variable called SQL, and we're going to type in our SQL here. So this time, let's select, uh, let's select the title, the author, and the contents, and we're going to select it from, the table name is data, right, where, and let, I don't know what we'll do here, maybe, uh, let's just do something where ID is equal to, and we're going to type a question mark. Now, you might have seen this in some of my other PHP tutorials. And the question mark will be replaced with whatever we bind to it. So we could change, we could do anything here, but I'm just going to keep it where ID equals whatever is passed in. Now, we're not going to go to the lengths of actually creating a text box, but we'll simulate that just with a variable. Okay. So next, we're going to do this, db query. Once again, we're using the query method. And here, we, it needs to know two things. Uh, number one, what is our SQL? Are we going to type it in, or are we going to reference a variable? First one, we're just going to reference the variable. And the second set is either a variable or an array of items of what we're going to bind. So in this case, we're adding one, uh, one item needs to be bound. So we're just going to type in two. And that should be fine. So once again, let's just grab this information right here. And we could actually clean this up maybe more and make sure that if uh, the number of rows is equal to one, then run it or something like that. But I'm not going to worry about that right now. Undefined variable Q, let's see. Oh, of course, uh, we need to do this. So make sure that we add our Q variable and refresh the page, and now we've only retrieved the record from the database where the ID was equal to two, and of course, if we change that, we're gonna get a different one. All right, great, but what if we wanna change it, be more specific? Let's say we only wanna get it where the author is Jeffrey Way and the ID is two, okay? How could we do that? So let's come back and select title, author, contents from data where ID is equal to question mark and author is also equal to question mark. All right? but now we need to bind more than one value. So to do that, we would use, uh, we would pass through an array. So within here we type array and within it we'll just type our, our values. So the first one we'll do, we need to make sure that we actually do this correctly. So the ID is going to be two and the author is Jeffrey Way. Okay, let's see if that worked. Come back, refresh the page, and now we have got. So let's see. Let's make sure that it is working correctly. Let's change the ID to four. Change that to four. And we are going to get an error, so that's something we'll also need to make sure is that we compensate for something like that. And it's saying an invalid argument supplied for the for each statement, and that's obviously because nothing was returned. So let's go back and change that back to two. All right, so that is another important feature. Now, when we do it this way, you need to remember the benefit is the values. These values will probably come from uh, the user and it will automatically be escaped so you don't have to worry about anything like that. You don't need to worry about SQL injection. It's, it's very, uh, very secure. Alright, so we've gone over quite a bit so far. We've gone over how to pass in actual SQL. We've used active records for selecting. Uh, we've used specifying what we're selecting and we've also looked over query bindings. So I want to show you one more thing today before uh, we call it a day, and I want to show you how to be a little more specific with active records. Uh, if we come back here with get, we can also pass in things like where. This db where something equals something, get that. So let's 
one last time, comment all this out. And what I think we'll do is in subsequent uh, screencasts, we're going to go into updates and inserts because it really can take a long time. And it's important that we learn how to select uh, all the different methods to select. And by the way, some of these aren't uh, get all anymore, so you would change the method. So let's start it again. And we are going to say that this db select, and what do we want to select this time? Let's select uh, the title and the contents, this db from, and you see we can be a little more specific with it. What table are we selecting from? It's called data. And why don't we also add aware? So this db where, and here we can type in uh, anything we want. So it would be two parameters. The first one would be uh, the field, and the second one would be the value. So where, uh, let's say, id is going to be equal to 2. All right. And then the final thing we would do, once again, is get. So q equals this db. Get. Right. Finally, sorry, I almost spilled my drink there. Finally, we just paste that in. And let's see if it works. And it does. I'm going to change the ID just to make sure. So let's do ID equals one. All right, and now we're getting another item. So this is very similar to the other methods, but it gives you a little more control and it allows us to work with active records. All right, so that's all I want to go over today. Uh, in the next tutorials, we're going to go even deeper, and we're going to experiment with all these different classes. And once you learn all this, we will slowly begin to work on our custom CMS. So I'm looking forward to showing you guys that. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave a comment. I want to clarify that this is, we're just scratching the surface of working with data. Uh, with CodeIgniter, there's many, many, many options that would take far too long, but hopefully this has been a good crash course, and I assure you we will continue to learn more in subsequent tutorials. I will see you guys next week. I'm Jeffrey Way. Bye.